In this video, I'll show you the step-by-step -step method of making a 3D part, exporting it into a slicer, preparing it for 3D print, and finally 3D printing it all using ZWCAD. Now, I'll use Cura slicer for this and Flash Forge Adventurer 4 to 3D print the actual part. If you want to follow along, then download the 30-day free trial of ZWCAD from the link in the description. And if you are a student, you can get its one-year license for free by sharing your student ID. So without any delay, let's get started. All right, so here we are in ZWCAD. Now, the first thing that I'll do is start with 2D sketch and I'll make the proper outline of the 3D part that we need to make. So I'll go to line tool here and let's just start with a simple line of length 100 unit. So I'll just make a horizontal line of length 100 and enter. So there we are. So we've got this first line and now I'm going to use it as a reference to make other geometry. So let's just start with circle now and here will make a circle of radius 3.6. Now let's go to line, add a line right here using the midpoint and the distance is 20. I'll repeat the line tool and in this direction I'll add another one with length of 10 unit. Now these are basically some references that I'm making right now and we'll be using these references to add more details in the drawing. Now the next step is our angle. So go to polar tracking, right click and select settings and make sure that increment angle is set to 30 degrees. With that set, I'll go to line, I'll click on this point and I'll make it exactly at 30 degrees like so. So I'll just make it kind of like this simply by eyeballing it. I'll repeat this process for this side. So select it and again, I'll make it like this. Now I'll go to line tool again and using this point as a reference, I'll make another line and again, another line kind of like this. Okay, so that's pretty much done. What's next? Well, next is copying this circle on some important points. So I'll go to copy tool. I'll select the circle that we created earlier and then I'll copy it here on this intersection point. I'll copy it here as well. Again, on the intersection point, I'll copy it here, here and here and done. Now it may look like completely random drawing here, but in a moment we'll clean it up and things will begin to kind of look very clear. So. The next step is adding some offsets. So the offset tool is right here. So go to offset and now I'll add an offset distance of one and enter. Now I'll click here and add an offset on this side. Click here and add an offset on opposite side. It looks like I selected, well, the incorrect line. So I'll just repeat it again. This is the line that I need and I'll click here. Similarly for this one as well, we need an offset above like that and offset below. All right, for this one as well, offset here offset outside and finally we need an offset here for one and here is the second one all right now before we trim these extra lines i actually forgot to add one more offset and that's from this center to this center first i need to add the line again another line from this center to this center as you can see there are several points in close proximity so i'll just ensure that it is selecting center which it is not so i'll press and hold my shift key and then I'll right click and select center. Now it will only select the center and we are done. Okay, once again, I'll go to offset. One is the distance, offset it here and that side. Again, for this, I'll repeat it. Okay, now it's time we clean this drawing. To do that, I'll go to trim and well, let's first trim this entire thing. We also don't need this, we also don't need this. Now there are several things that we can actually delete here. So let's just press escape clean this up. I don't need these two lines as well. So I'll delete it. And also we don't need these lines that are at the center. So actually not this one. So shift select this, select this, this line and just get rid of it. Finally, these two get rid of it. All right, let's go to trim again and let's clean this space as well. So here we go. All right. And you know, we can repeat the process for all of these well, drawings as well. Here we are. Just a bit of cleanup work is required. For example, these two lines and this one, this should go and this should be cleaned up. And so is the case with this. This should be cleaned up as well. And do we have anything here? No, so it's already well clean. There we are, we've got the outline. Now it's time to add some tangents. To do that, I'll go to line tool and here in the object snap, I'll deactivate every other snap except for tangent. Though we can use shift right click for this, but I'll be repeating it for 
well several geometries so i prefer this method for this example so only tangent is on everything else is off now i'll select this and this circle and it will add a tangent repeat this process so press the space bar or enter key twice to repeat this line tool and there we are and in a similar way repeat the line tool again repeat the line tool and keep adding all these tangent lines there we are we've added it finally let's add the smaller circle so i'll go to circle and here i'll add the circle of radius 2 but as you can see it's not selecting radius because we deactivated all the snaps so right click on object snap and activate every other snap that was active which is end mid center and intersection and of course i'll leave tangent on now with this i'll type 2 enter and simply i'll copy this and paste it at the center of all of these circles there we are we now have the proper outline all we need is a few details here so the details can be added using fillet so let's go to fillet type r for radius and it should be one and i'll add the first radius right here then press enter to repeat the command add the second radius here and now we need another fillet of radius 2 here and here so let's go to fillet then r enter and it should be 2 enter now this and this is 2 unit and so is this all right this is done now this is finished before we convert this into 3d though we need closed spaces this is made with a bunch of lines and it's not good for 3d we need closed regions and that we can create using this boundary command so let's go to boundary and let's bring the dialog box here now we do want to create polylines not region obviously we want closed region but we won't be using this region geometry for this we'll be using polyline so i'll select polyline and i'll select nested island option and then click ok now we will select this area this area and this area so these are the three areas actually we have several other islands as well that we'll select so maybe let's go on and select every other island that we find here that we need actually for this so there we are and press enter so this is done now let's repeat it one more time and this time i'll select these islands so click here here and here and press enter again so basically it may look like nothing has actually happened but something did happen now i'll show you what that is so go to solid and here maybe i'll just orbit this drawing slightly just to show you it in 3d view and now let's go to extrude now i'll select this one here and as you can see it is highlighting that entire polyline so there we are now you can see what it is highlighting and what it will extrude so maybe let's just start extruding this one this polyline and we want to extrude this polyline and we want to extrude this polyline okay these three press enter and now add a height now in this case i'll add a height of two unit so i'll just type two press enter and we are done now i'll repeat this process but before i do that i'll change the visual style which is set to 2d wireframe let's change it to maybe flat and now you can see it in 3d view let's go to extrude again select all of these smaller circles and press enter and just add a distance of 20 unit this distance is completely random and i'll show you why i selected this random distance and now let's go to extrude again select this and this 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 one and this one so all of these circles all right did i miss anything i think not okay and now this should be six unit there we are it looks like i did actually miss this one so i'll go to extrude i'll select this circle and i'll select this circle as well all right there we are and it is not selecting it so let's just orbit this drawing slightly here and let's try it again so extrude this circle and extrude this circle and the distance is six and we are done okay one more detail so let's go to extrude now let's select this one and this is the polyline that we'd like to select here so let's select this and select the polyline now that's this entire region here also we'll select the polyline that is here and as you can see i'm selecting just the polylines so polyline and here also we'll select the polyline now we can also select the polyline that is inside this so select this and select this polyline here then go to this one select polyline and go to this one this part here select polyline press enter and now this distance is 0 0.3 unit and there we are it just filled this entire region 
that's what we wanted here for this and it is almost done we just need to subtract this part from this smaller cylindrical shape now we can do that using this subtract tools so i'll go to subtract i'll select this one this solid enter and then i'll select this so i'll just do it one by one just to make sure that everything works properly so select this press enter and then select this and this is gone let's do it again subtract select this press enter then select this and press enter repeat it select this press enter then select this and enter once again select this enter select this and enter and finally you know what i think i should just orbit my drawing to make it more clear like this so subtract select this enter then select this and enter we are done so there we are so this part is half done we'll just mirror it and we'll get the other half the mirror tool is right here mirror 3d so before i do that let's just combine it all into one because these are all separate 3d objects so i'll go to union i'll select it all entirely press enter it's now a single object okay now i'll go to mirror 3d i'll select this part enter and i'll just select three points on the mirroring plane so maybe i'll just start with this one it doesn't matter which point i'll just select this and i'll just select this midpoint and any other midpoint here on this plane is just fine so i think i'll be selecting this midpoint right here and then press enter and we are done so we have this mirrored copy so what just happened here so look at this so this is the top half and this is the bottom half it will just create the exact replica on the other side and once again we can use union tool to just combine it all into one unit and that's just one unit so this is how we can create the 3d part all right now before we move any further let's just save this drawing so i'll just save it here on desktop and i'll call it 3d print all right and now let's just export it for exporting this i'll type export and we need to export it in stl format for 3d printing so let's type export press enter and here go to the format and select stl i'll go to desktop i'll keep the same name which is 3d print and save now select the part which is this one press enter and we are done now let's see what we have now so we have this 3d print.stl file which will now slice in our slicer software cura all right so now that we have the stl file let's double click to open this one now i already have ultimaker cura installed so it's going to open it in that software but if you don't well you can download and install the software for free it's available from ultimaker cura now in this cura software i already have some predefined settings for example i've selected my adventurer 4 3d printer if you have configured it that's going to show up here if not you can go to the drop down select add printer and add your 3d printer in this list also you can select the material from here i've selected pla though you can select anything else which is supported by your 3d printer now there are some print settings here now these are settings that i've already defined and they kind of work best for me so i'm not going to make any changes here but just in case you want to make these settings well feel free to make these settings this video is just too small to explain everything about all these settings as they are really very comprehensive so i'll skip that part now let's go to this one so this is our final 3d printed piece and that's how it's going to look like on the print bed so if you want to increase its size change its orientation rotation angle and so on just select this one and you can modify it from here so you can move it you can scale it up or down but obviously i made it on a 1 is to 1 scale so i am just going to print it with whatever the original scale we created it with and also you can rotate mirror and so on so i think we are all set let's simply click on slice and that's going to generate a g code also you can see that it will consume 9 gram of pla and it will take 1 hour and 3 minutes to create this 3d printed part so let's save the g code on disk and i'll go to desktop and i'll leave it the default name maybe but i'll simply change this prefix i'll call it zwcad 3d print g code and save it and we are done now we'll send this g code to a 3d printer All right now it's to our 3D printer so all you need to do is just send this G code file to the 3D printer which in my case is Adventurer 4 and I'll start by bed leveling setting the temperature of bed setting the print head temperature and the basic settings once that is done it will start printing and it will take about 1 hour as you saw in the slicer software 
and soon we'll have the final product that looks like this now this one is the final result and it has these support structures here at the bottom which you can remove to get this final piece and that's how you can get from CAD file to an actual product in your hand using ZWCAD. So that was the entire process of 3D part to actual product using ZWCAD. Let me know what you want to see in the next video and I'll see you soon in the next one.